Good day. Since my last video, I've got a lot of requests about people asking me how do you start off actually adding your own features to FreeCAD? Um, so I'm going to try and do this from a very high level as an engineer, not a software developer, to show you what's going on. So um, we've got FreeCAD open here, and if you remember from a previous video, uh, you've got this Python console when you do anything and uh, if you run commands let's say I go and do my 2D analysis close that window and I activate that analysis um, you can see whatever you do actually appears in the Python console now initially FreeCAD was developed in C++ and Python came in longer but currently most of the development work is actually happening in Python and if you go to a theme forum there's actually a Python coding standard where they give you rules and regulations of how you should code the Python but the question is always what do you code and where do you start now what you need to understand is when you run an analysis in, uh, in uh, FreeCAD I'm just going to close this pipeline of mine uh, and delete it when you run an analysis all you're actually doing is you're creating an input deck if you stand on your solver for calculus you say write input file and edit input file this input file that's created calls a totally separate program called Calculix and Calculix does the solving and then it gets pulled back into FreeCAD now uh, if you're not familiar with Calculix the main author is uh, Guido Dant and this is his website and you can see Calculix is quite advanced the front page has got a, a paraglider on it and you can actually find the documentation for Calculix um, yeah, in PDF so that's Calculix and then it's, it's got its own graphical interface that seems a little bit outdated but it's all there and you can uh, go through it so over here I've got a website called FEA Cluster and uh, what they do is they actually run Calculix jobs at a cost for you um, so and there's even links to Megway is a, a GUI uh, running Calculix in the background and they charge money for the GUI so this is actually a very used tool it's um, it's very capable uh, I think if you go to Guido Dan's website it says it started off being based on uh, based on Abacus uh, its input deck is very similar to Abacus and uh, if you go and look at the uh, finite capabilities of Calculix you'll be surprised that there's very few things it can't do uh, types of analysis electromagnetics uh, it's even comp computational fluid dynamics in uh, and and all of that is just because there has been nothing new happening in FEM solvers for the last 20 years in any case right so if I go back to it if you cluster they've got the documentation for me in a very browsable form and you can see a lot of things happening here um, on the other side it's the same documentation I just like to browse through this site that it's quite quick and easy to find stuff and go up and down um, so one thing that's been built into the FreeCAD system that's quite new and nobody knows about but it hasn't been quite finished off is hydraulic pipe systems and there's an example here and a simple example problems of how you do it in Calculix and uh, they draw the little problem there and all your elements and they give you an input deck and how to solve it and what it means um, but what's actually been done if you go through theory you've got these fluid sections so there's got you've got your general beam sections but just like that they created fluid sections and the fluid sections for liquids has been completed the fluid sections for gases is outstanding and open channels is outstanding but since this is completed um, and the inputs and outputs look very similar I think it's a really good area to start on to just copy and copy and manipulate some code to add some new features um, and a simple way of doing it. So how does this 1D flow in FreeCAD work? So let's close all our analysis, close without saving, close that, and we start a new analysis. Um, so I, I have to remember how this actually works. I haven't done this in a while, but let's go to our um, our draft workbench, and we're just going to draw a simple line. So I'm going to say, let's draw a point for the inlet, take it out a bit, and then draw the outlet. And we say we finished off there and uh, this is an XY plane so I'm just going to switch off my grid and we need this in the uh, XZ plane so we're just going to go 90 degrees around X um, 
get in the right coordinate system apply okay and uh, we can now there, there we see our little problem we've made we now go to our firmware page and create the analysis click on the wire g mesh it apply then we've actually got a mesh on this so you can see it's a 1d mesh uh we'll switch off uh, well on the thing and switch off the mesh so we've got these 1d uh, flow elements here if we click on this 1d flow element open it up uh, you can see it's it's already got selections for liquid gas and open channel but if i select gas it says it's got nothing in there already and the sofa open channel but what's nice about this little example is the guys that wrote it um or fancy actually made it in such a way that if you change one of the parameters the whole input deck actually changes and the GUI changes and to understand how this GUI works we can actually link school the thing called PY side for the GUI um, and you can do some tutorials on that or you can check the free CAD code uh, but it's very useful because as you change things you can update the GUI so what we're going to do here is we're going to just say let's get an inlet um, uh, let me select that uh, edge there as our inlet so let's keep the pressure there let's add a second element say so our second element is a, a, a manning you know a normal pipe that's a very small pipe but let's leave it that way uh, we add that section there and then we go and add another element and say that's our pipe outlet um, you always need an inlet and an outlet for these things uh, if you go read the calculus documentation you'll see it and uh, Let's just drop the pressure here so we actually get a throw rate on it. Um, and uh, one constraint you need to add, that's why I had to put in the Z, is uh, self weight. And if you put this on a firmer mechanical analysis, it should solve for us very quickly. Uh, we haven't defined the material object. Let's just add a fluid, water, and uh, let's go stand there again, solve it. And you can see here's our results. If I open it up, it firstly means that 2D meshes aren't supported, but you'll see these values. We solved the mass flow rate and the network pressure is there. And you can see the pressure actually varies from the from the top to the bottom, it gets very low. Um, it's also supported in the post pipeline. So if I switch off the, the wire and the mesh and I click on this one, I can say I just want to see the nodes, and you can see uh, the mass flow rate that stays constant and then the network pressure you can actually see as it goes yeah. um, and this is quite a useful feature if you start getting big hydraulic networks or gas networks I think it can solve a lot of engineering problems and it's supported by Calculix but not fully in 3K yet so how do we go about building this feature in to 3K um, so I think the next step is to explain to you guys uh, how you get hold of the 3K source code right so um, on GitHub itself, you will find uh, FreeCAD, FreeCAD is a FreeCAD. You have to create an account here and you'll fork your own account for all your changes you build in. And uh, what you'll see is um, once you're in the main account, you can say, okay, well, I want to clone the source code and you can copy it and you get all the source code in, uh, in a link that you can use in GitHub. But now there's plenty of utilities for using GitHub. The good computer science guys all use the command line and how it works, but I'm a very lazy engineer and I know very little about programming. So I discovered this tool called Git Extensions, uh, which is available since I'm on Linux. It automatically gives you a mono download. Um, it's actually a Windows tool, but it's very useful. And if you're going to run it on Linux on mono, you need to actually install the latest version of mono. Uh, don't worry about all these links. I'll post them at the bottom of this video. Um, so over here I've got my git extensions open and uh, the thing I did this evening I go pull fetch all and get all my branches that I'm busy with um, so you can get all your branches in there and uh, if you've got your branches you can see what's going on that everybody did so I'm pulling a few branches on the um, you know on the main tree so that's your origin master and if I go stand on that branch and I say check out branch that's my branch uh, and uh, you can see all the changes and everything everybody else has done so here's some contributions by Bert in the last few days and it tells you when it's been done and shows you all the forks uh, but how you get your source code in here is actually very simple when you start off this is an empty thing you'll go start clone repository 
and you'll see that link that you've copied appears there and then you need to pick a destination and pick a source directory because at the end of the day where you run FreeCAD and the source directory is not always the same uh, and you copy your source and then it will take a while to click clone and it will download and you'll have the main branch at least and then when you uh, go edit all your repositories you can actually add some more repositories and uh, you'll see it's only whose branch it is that you change in there and when you pull it you get all these changes together now to show you something uh, for instance I've been spending a, a few months working on a, on a, this uh, branch of mine to do 3D outputs from beams and shelves and uh, every time you change something you click commit and you put it in the, the commit but if I stand on that branch and I go stand on the origin branch or the main branch and I say rebase on this branch and that's actually what it's about uh, it puts all my changes on top of the main branch and it's actually all added together so you can see all my changes on top of the main branch and if I go to compile FreeCAD now I've got all these programming things and in that way while everybody else is updating FreeCAD you can also update your changes and you see some of the things I've done quite a long time ago it's about a month old it's not finished yet and, and that's the thing you go on your own pace and you do the things you want to do um, but if you've got your source directory now how do you compile FreeCAD uh, so if you go search for things you'll find the compile on Unix uh, page standing in the corner there and when they go for a compile on Unix it shows you dependencies uh, if you go all the way down and you're like on Ubuntu like I am or SUSE or Debian you can actually get some commands and install all the dependencies for you and that makes it quite easy um, in this adding your dependencies they recommend that you use CMake um, so they recommend you build it with that command and you deactivate some things I've learned uh, the lazy way I install CMake um, dash GUI and uh, if you do that you actually get a graphical interface for what you want to compile so you go specify your source your build and you need all the dependencies installed and then you can click here on for instance what you want to install built or not built so if I go you yeah, can act activate to deactivate the theme and you'll click configure and in configure if you've missed the dependency it will tell you yeah and you can actually go find that dependency and uh, once you're done you just click generate and in that compile directory you specified there you can now literally go stand and say uh, make and it will build your free CAD for you from everything that's been done now now how do you get to editing the file so since a lot of the work's been done in, in Python you can actually just use any Python editor uh, I've got Eclipse open here so uh, I've previously installed Eclipse because it can do uh, Python and C++ in one uh, to get the Python running if you go help install new software uh, and you click on available software sites you can actually get this PYDEV and that's what gives you the Python capabilities uh, I'm not going to do that now so if you start in your FreeCAD source it will actually give you your um, branch you're on for the uh, uh, Git, GitHub as well you can manage it from there if you really know what you're doing I don't so that's why I use Git extensions if you click source uh, mod theme you find all the files contributed to the theme workbench so the main files you'll see is in the head directory and one of the important ones is theme input writer ccx which writes the files for calculus um, so how this works is app is all the files that you need to create the objects that's not linked to the GUI app itself is a C++ the GUI directory is in the GUI files linked to those C++ files and most of these files are uh, also C++ and then you get Python objects that's totally created in Python and PY GUI which is the GUI objects totally created in Python and if you open one of these directories you'll see uh, there's a theme so here you can see the naming convention if you scroll you'll easily get the naming convention so for our objects we've got a theme element fluid 1D and if I open that up uh, that is the adds all the properties we need and adds all the variables 
and that's when you create that object, the object is created, but it doesn't necessarily have the uh, GUI link. But if you open the GUI directory, you can see here's your command. Open the command, it's also a short amount of code. Task panel is the one that does the most. So if you open the task panel, you can see here we now connect to our QT4 on the PY side and get all the variables. And there's a definition of all the um, base things added to FreeCAD. So you can see this is also not a lot of code. So that's why I said this is probably a good one to get started off with to build all those capabilities into, into FreeCAD if you want to. If you want to go do your own thing uh, and you're not that acquainted with FreeCAD, uh, there's another GitHub link called uh, with some examples and um, I'll post the link and this guy keeps his models updated and there's some seriously advanced examples here for instance here's a non-linear pillow blowing up um, some contact leaf springs in contact uh, permanent deformation on bending pipes there's like really good exam advanced examples of everything if you want to do something else a specific goal because you need to know what you want to put into your uh, into your CCX input writer so that you've got the right Calculix file going. So um, I think that's me for showing you the basics of doing this. Uh, I hope it's helped and uh, until next time. Cheers.